a red letter day in the history of the National Basketball League and the Melbourne faithful have turned out in their thousands. A sellout crowd from the cage as we prepare to celebrate Andrew Gaze's 600th NBL appearance. Hello everyone, I'm John Casey. Great to have you with us for this historic occasion. And Andrew Gaze, Australia's number one basketballer, but a man who has played a world sport, world class, and certainly a world class ambassador for his sport as well off the floor. We'll get the job done tonight in game number 600. Steve Carfino, he is along for the ride as usual, and you can't say enough about Andrew Gaze. We sure can. I mean, you talk about him being ambassador for the game, but the guy can just flat out hoop and we're going to see some of his stats amazing stats but also how humble he's been through all those years of being great and he is the greatest player without a doubt that will ever play here in Australia. Yes some of these records are going to stand forever it started 20 years ago almost to the day February 1984 and Andrew Gaze making his debut and well this is a very young looking Andrew Steve some of our younger viewers may not have seen this and certainly he's been able to get to the rack and knock down shots with regularity throughout this amazing career it sure has and he's been deceptive you know you look at him laying the basketball up and how agile he is and how well he shoots the basketball you forget that he's six foot seven and I think that's the first thing people say when they first try to guard him when they come into the league I didn't realize he was that big he certainly, and we're seeing defensive skills here as well, which always haven't been his strength. But when you see the way he is able to accumulate points, everyone knows he's going to get the ball. Everyone knows that they need to do something about it. And he still continues to rack up points. And Andrew Gay's dunking. For our younger viewers who didn't believe it was true, here is proof, not only dunking, but he is destroying the Geelong Supercats in a very memorable display there. And right here tonight, the first man out on the floor taking free throws, getting set for this memorable occasion. But he needs a win, Steve. He sure does. I mean, this is a team, the Adelaide 36ers, who are in great form. They're coming in. They play a very run-and-gun style, which suits the Melbourne Tigers. We're going to see a high-scoring game at a very good rate. Both of these teams are playing their best basketball of the year, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Yes, third against fourth should be a good one. Here's some of the numbers just to amaze you even further regarding the fact that Andrew Gay as you can see by the venues here, he has not disappointed fans anywhere in Australia. When he comes to your home venue, invariably Andrew Gaze has lit it up with some big numbers. And then you see with a minimum of 100 games how far ahead Andrew is of the next best player with Jason Reese. Steve Carpino makes it in at 23 and a half, top 10 all time. Could you have maintained that for 600, Steve? Absolutely not. And that's the thing, the number of games that he's played at such an efficient rate of high scoring, that's what's amazing. And Anybody can do it like for 100 or 200 games, but anybody that gets up over that, they're a tremendous player. Well, 101 times above 40 points in a game. I equate 40 points in a game to a century in cricket. And as you can see, Leroy Loggins is a legend, perhaps the best import ever to play here. And he has done it 23 times. Derek Ruck is still going strong. Al Green, who holds the single game scoring record. All great players there, but no one, no one can even touch Andrew. And tonight's opponent, Adelaide, who we should congratulate for moving this match so that Andrew could celebrate with his family and fans. Well, they take it the worst, 32.4. And the teams down the bottom there, obviously New Zealand, Hunter, West Sydney, Cairns, Townsville, all ex expansion teams so over the journey Andrew has destroyed almost every team in the National Basketball League and this was his greatest ever season 1987 that's right 44.1 points per game that is an average and as you see on the right of the screen those were the matches after he missed five games with injury his lowest score is 39 how you maintain that sort of scoring rate over that period well that's never going to be touched let alone equaled in fact these numbers are going to stay stand for ever and a day in the National Basketball League and it's been certainly one of the pleasures of Fox Sports to be around for 10 years and be a part of his career. It sure is. I mean we're going to talk about a lot of amazing things with Andrew Gaze but remember he has the best defender on him. He knows every coach is trying to find some way to at least slow him down because they know if they can do that in a good way they'll probably win the game and still nobody has come up with an answer. No, and we asked Andrew after all of that what was his most memorable feeling in basketball? Um, I think that uh, of competing at the Olympic Games and, and representing my country. I think from ever since I was a youngster, I always aspired to one day go to the Olympic Games and, and play for Australia. And I, and I guess that was instilled in me because 
from a young age, I was there when my dad was off uh, either coaching or playing and seeing what it meant to him. I guess some of that rubbed off on me. So when you eventually get there, it, uh, it's a big thrill because you've had those boyhood dreams your whole life. And carrying the flag into the Olympic Stadium in 2000 to start the games there must have been a thrill for him as well. We're celebrating Andrew Gaze's 600th NBL match. It's Melbourne against Adelaide. We'll have more for you right after this. Yeah, mate, one, two, one, two. Yes, I am, one, two, one, two. You guys did it. You did it real good, though. Yeah. You guys. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Three and a half thousand tickets have been sold. A sellout here at the cage in Melbourne. And the owner of the Tigers, Seamus McPeak, I'm sure would have sold more if he could. We're here to celebrate with Andrew Gaze, a 600th appearance as Melbourne play host to the Adelaide 36ers. Let's get proceedings underway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we welcome you to the cage for tonight's Phillips Championship game between the Adelaide 36ers and your very own Melbourne Higher Tigers. Would you please give the warmest welcome to the visiting team, the Adelaide 36ers, number five, Brett Ma. Number eight, Darren Ng. Number nine, Willie Farley. Number 11, David Cooper. Number 12, Jacob Holmes. Number 15, Jason Williams. Number 20, Brad Gerlach. Number 31, Oscar Foreman. Number 45, Dusty Reichardt. And number 53, Paul Rees. Head coach, Phil Smythe. Assistant coach is Steve Brini. Welcome, Adelaide. Warm it up. Warm it up, Cage, for your very own Melbourne Higher Tigers. Number four, Daryl Corletto. Number nine, David Steer. Number 11, Neil Motra. Number 12, David Donaldson. Number 21, LC, Leonard Copeland. Number 32, Danny Thomas. 33, Steven. 41, Rashad Tucker. Number 44 is Z Mack. Number 45, Gerard Leonard. Number 50, Mark Bradkey. And number 600, Andrew Gay! <laughs> Head coach Lindsay Gay's assistant coach is Alan Westover, Warwick Guinea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a very special night for Andrew Gay's and the Melbourne Tigers and the National Basketball League as Andrew becomes the first player in the history of the league to reach 600 games. 
As we know with Andrew, it's all about the game, but tonight, it's all about Andrew. Before we make our presentation to Andrew, ladies and gentlemen, we've got two of our Tigers Dodo dancers presenting flowers to Melinda and Margaret Gaze. Margaret up in the stands where she sits every game and Melinda with us down here. Give the ladies a round of applause. <laughs> to achieve milestones comparable to Andrews in any code means someone has to be a true champion. One such man, now a great supporter of the Tigers, ladies and gentlemen, through his radio show on SEN 1116, is another Tigers legend. Kevin Bartlett, the first man to play 400 VFL AFL games. Here to congratulate Andrew Gaze. <laughs> thanks Kevin, thanks for coming along. Stay with us to make a presentation on behalf of the Melbourne Tigers, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. David Minier, the club chairman. Now David assures me that we can't take the wrapping. It is a fine handcrafted electric blue and white glass bowl. I'm sure Melinda will appreciate the glass bowl with those beautiful flowers. So thanks very much David Minier and the Melbourne Tigers. Don't go away, come back over here son. Last but not least in many eyes, Andrew has represented all that the NBL stands for. Great sport, great talent, and a great role model. To make a presentation on behalf of the league and naming rights sponsor Phillips, would you please welcome NBL Commissioner, Mr. Rick Burton. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Phillips Championship and the NBL, and our fans, our tens of millions of fans in Australia, New Zealand, China, and throughout Asia, it gives me a great pleasure tonight to present to Andrew, who is easily one of the greatest athletes that Australia has ever produced in any sport. And your being here tonight is so appropriate. On behalf of Phillips and the NBL, we'd like to present to Andrew and to his family this 32-inch widescreen LCD TV from Philips with Philips Pixel Plus 2 and Ambilight technology. This will be a great thing for you to watch the Philips Championship in the future. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd be remiss without saying that you're looking at the greatest basketball player Australia has ever produced. But more importantly, and so much more rare in sport, you're viewing a world-class athlete in a world game. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Gaze. Give it up for Andrew Gaze, 600 games, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Rick Burton. We'd like to thank Phillips. The Phillips Championship it is! Well, that's certainly going to put some pressure on Andrew that's Gaze to perform out. now. One of the longest presentations, but certainly one of the most Three absent cheers, so for our Let's digital go. subscribers Three on Foxtel and Oddstar. You get Sports Active to enjoy this match as well. Here's an idea oh, of what you yeah. can look forward to. You know what? It's a basketball junkie's dream. It's all about choice. Choose the huddle you want to listen to. Watch what you want whenever you damn well please. This is great. From close-up cameras to shots that won't miss a thing, you're in the game. You'll be able to view every statistic you could possibly imagine. From live stats to the league table, it's all here, baby. Hoop fans, hop on it. Available on selected games to Foxtel and All-Star Digital subscribers. And during my absence last Wednesday night, I was able to hook into the Brisbane Adelaide game via Sports Active. It was outstanding Stay success. Adelaide. Great commentary as well. Didn't have to turn that off, Steve. I thought you and Shade did an excellent job. But the camera angles and also the stats that were available to me were most impressive. I'm sure all our digital viewers who have used it are happy with it. If you haven't, then you should get on board. Here's the starting fives. And as usual, the Tigers with Gaze and Copeland in the backcourt. Dave Thomas was great in Perth. Stephen Hoare, Mark Bradkey former Adelaide boy. 
Ma and Farley, arguably the best caught in the league. Jacob Holmes, Dusty Reichardt and David Cooper. And Phil Smyre, the great ambassador for the sport as well. He and the club of Adelaide moved this match so we could celebrate it in Melbourne. But that's where their benevolence is going to end. They want to win to hold on to third. The Tigers need a win to hold on to fourth as Andrew Gaze's 600th NBL appearance gets underway. Surely they run the first play for him, Steve. You'd have to. They run most of them for him anyway. <laughs> Gaze lurking back door. Brad at the top of the key. Brett Ma has the job guarding Andrew. Ball looking for Gaze. Couldn't find a passing lane. Now Dave Thomas kept at bay by Dusty Reichardt. Leonard Copeland fires and gets the result. Kind of fitting that his partner in crime, Leonard Copeland, knocks down the first shot of his 600 game. They've had some great ones together. Dusty Reichardt. Now Cooper a long way from the hoop as the shot clock works down to single numbers. And Reichardt against Dave Thomas doing an excellent defensive job. Brett Ma must get busy, feeds Cooper. This is going to expire. And the Melbourne Tigers D with plenty of starch to start the game. Dave Cooper, although he doesn't want to shoot the, the catch and shoot 17 footer, he has to be aware of how much time is on the shot clock and launch one up. Hall gets it to Andrew Gaze, isolated against Brett Ma. 60 seconds played from the cage. Tigers have hit the only field goal so far. Copeland came up with the goods, this time unsuccessfully, as Jacob Holmes grabs the rebound and Adelaide running quickly up the floor. And great D from the left. Thank you. Well, it's a clear case that both of these teams want to get this thing out, whether it's a made or a missed basket. Brett Maher takes it from Cooper in traffic. He fires, and it's all the bottom of the Brett net for Brett Maher. Took them 90 seconds. But Adelaide on the board. And the pass from Bradkey intended for Gaze. Heads out of court. The Tigers turn it over for the first time. These teams have already played twice this year. Very entertaining affairs. Melbourne winning by 17 here against Adelaide and the 36ers. Well, they came up with the win as well in Adelaide. On the 27th of November, it was a 12-point game. We played almost two minutes here in this opening term of State. Thomas looks for the baseline. Jacob Holmes did enough to worry him out of the shot. But Stephen Hoare is there to pick up the slacks. Right away, Adelaide kick it up. Now Brett Maher retreats away from Copeland. Goes to Farley. Cooper getting some latitude from Mark Bradkey. Now Jacob Holmes against Stephen Hoare. He fires well short. And it trickles out of court. That is Jacob Holmes' style. He does shoot the ball rather flat. That time didn't even get it to the front of the rim. It never looks like it's going to make it. It never looks like it's high enough to go in. Bradkey isolated baseline. Fires over Jacob Holmes. Copeland went for the tip jam. Unsuccessfully, and Reichardt goes to Ma. Holmes and Cooper ahead of him. He fires quickly, unsuccessfully. Bradkey got a piece of it, but it spills back to the Adelaide captain. Now Jacob Holmes baseline, again unsuccessfully. Cooper getting a piece of it, and forcing Melbourne to knock it out of court. Adelaide restart. Quick, great shot from Jacob Holmes, and it can find space to add another two for Adelaide. Now it's Dave Thomas. Up the floor very quickly, but shut down by Jacob Holmes. Now he fires over David Cooper. Couldn't get it to go, and Brett Maher with the rebound. And Adelaide streak forward again, but Brett Maher's thrown it straight to Andrew Gaze. The alley -oop play is on, but Leonard Copeland couldn't get on the end of that one. Man, he, he went and got that one. That would have been like Cortez Groves getting one. That was way up there. Reichardt wants Farley going back door on Gaze and the fall away from Willie Farley. Wouldn't tumble. Gets it back though after help from David Cooper and Mars left alone. He works into some space past Mark Bradke. Finding Jacob Holmes who dances into the paint off the front of the rim again and Stephen Hall puts a stop to it. Dave Thomas, the only teammate ahead of Copeland at the moment. He slows it down. Andrew Gaze yet to get a shot off in the match. We played almost four minutes as Stephen Hall looks back to for Gaze in his first basket. 
soon as that entry pass went into the high post, Brett Maher knew he was beat for a layup. Well executed play. Fans providing a great atmosphere here at the cage. The pass from Cooper knocked down by Bradkey. Copeland in support. Gay's joining in. And Andrew has back to back baskets. Gay's house, the big fella leading the break. Looked like he was going to stumble and give it up. Brilliantly done. Now Brett Ma operating, finding Jacob Holmes. Works inside Dave Thomas. Reichardt from close range, short armed at Dave Cooper with the tip in. Delay, game. And a delay of game warning called on David Cooper. That seems a little harsh. Oscar Foreman into the match early here as Jacob Holmes gets a rest for Adelaide, but Foreman has been in great touch. We saw that last Wednesday night in Brisbane. And he had 16 points. Hey, Dusty. And now Bradkey getting a shot from Cooper. Goes back for seconds. And the two is waved Referee. away by referee Tony Webb. On the side, called the foul on number 11, David Cooper. Foul called on David Cooper. The first in the match. We played almost five minutes. And that's that's no surprise, though, foul. because these two teams rack up the least fouls of the teams in the NBL. Copeland looking dangerous. Goes to Dave Thomas, who steps back from Cooper and ices another two. Dave Thomas. To a five-point buffer for the Melbourne Tigers. Looking to win their sixth game from their last seven as Brett Maher confidently fires but couldn't finish it off. Spills to Cooper, being very active. And now Farley with his first open look and he makes the play. Adelaide matching it with Melbourne early on here as Copeland drains a long three. Well, it looks like Lennar Copeland thinks it's his party. And he just had that thing in rhythm. When you're feeling when you're feeling it like that, it doesn't matter how far you're out. If you're in rhythm, you feel like you can knock it down. Riker working on Dave Thomas, who was runner-up to the best defensive player in the country two seasons ago. But on this occasion, he's called for the foul. Free throws to come for Adelaide. Interestingly, in the two matches played between these teams so far this year, the home team has had 30-plus free throws, and the away team has been in the teens. Shooting two. Really? Dusty Reichardt averaging 21 per game, top five in the league, top ten in rebounding as well. Has had early discussions with Adelaide about an extension of his contract into next season. Well, why wouldn't you? And a guy that does it at that good of a rate, and you want to try and pick it up in another area because you're getting solid performances from him every night. Stephen Hall left alone says, thank you very much for the invitation. He knocks down the three. The Tigers lead by seven. And they just cannot give anybody in this league an open look like that. Middle stages of this opening period, and Paul Reese had plenty of time to think about it. Here's Oscar Foreman jacking it up again, showing us why he's the best three-point shooter in the country right now. Well, for one, he's got a really good stroke going this year with a lot of confidence. And two, he never takes a bad one. Stays within his game. Shot clock down to 10 for the Tigers. And Gay's guarded by Ma. Hands off to Copeland, his partner in crime. Thought he was fouled after the shot. Whistle didn't come, however. Now Gay's needing help, provided by Copeland. And Willie Farley with the job guarding LC at the moment. Poor. Skip pass for Dave Thomas, who's left alone looking for the triple. That is off the money. Stephen Hall's got it again. The Bradkey from close range. Oh, and it's oh, nice work, Stephen. Paul Reese left alone, firing from good range, caught the front of the iron, and Stephen Hall doing it at both ends at the moment as Copeland goes to gaze. Dave Thomas ahead of him gets it next. Now Gaze launches the triple. Oh, oh, and it's from the fans to see. No! No! Three-point last night. Tigers have hit some bombs. Three, Andrew. Yeah, Lenard Copeland's launched a couple of them, and Andrew just outdid him. That one was from about 27 feet. Tigers have scored the last five. They lead by nine. 
And Breitart goes back to work and that's jumped out of the cylinder. Brandy releases Copeland. Four working hard. Couldn't time it. He gets the ball back to Dave Thomas who kisses it a little too oh, firmly timing, off the glass. Now it's Farley looking to go to work. He feeds Reichardt from close range. Heads up play from Farley. He saw Reichardt available all the way up the floor, but just tied it to perfection. Rees trying to keep Bradkey at bay. Good luck for that assignment. And Hoagie adds another two. All five players for Melbourne have scored in the match. Adelaide has six scorers at the moment in what has been an entertaining and free-flowing affair. Substitutions are made and time out called as well by Phil Smythes. The Adelaide 36ers find themselves trailing by nine and we have 3.43 to play here in term number one. And after this break, Leonard Copeland and Andrew Gaze will take a break. Coming in for them Daryl McDonald and Daryl Carletto. Well, getting in the spirit of the Andrew Gay 600 scenario and also looking to raise some money for the tsunami victims. For our MBL viewers, this is your prize. It is a signed framed print from the last Tigers Championship in 1997, signed by all 10 players. Now, to bid, we're going to conduct an auction. Send in your bids to mbl at foxsports.com.au. We'll keep the auction open until midday next Tuesday. And at the All-Star Extravaganza, Extravaganza next Wednesday night, we will announce who has made the highest bid and will walk away with this collection. Collector's item. Steve, you but said you wanted to get the bidding started. That's right, Casey, you know, and I know that it's all going for a good cause, but that's a, try to, that's quite a piece of memorabilia that you're giving up from your personal collection. I am, I want it. I want it for my personal collection. 200 bucks. 200. 200. Not 200. 200. 200. Great start. I'm going to 250. I want it back on the wall. So 250 you have to bid. Plus, to get the job done, mbl at foxsports.com.au will tell you more on MBL Wrap tomorrow night, but a very, very worthy cause. And it's Adelaide, look to get something going with one on the shot clock, and Brett Ma is there to ice the basket. Corletto onto the floor as well, left alone from three points. He's shot the ball particularly well this season and continues to do so. Well, they put in these guards, Corletto and McDonald, of course, they just keep it going on the same page, sometimes lifting it into another level. Tigers with just two starters on the floor at the moment as Oscar Foreman Oscar. continues to drain Four the long range ball. Foreman with six points leads Adelaide at the moment. Gaze has seven, including three of three shooting. And David Stiff under pressure from Foreman has coughed it up. Knocking it down onto the sideline and out of court, and Adelaide will get possession as Rashad Tucker checks in, leaving Mark Radke as the only starter on the floor for Melbourne. And Adelaide have Ma and Jacob Holmes on the floor as starters at the moment. Ma shakes Daryl McDonald, works into some space, took them all on, and came up with the finishing touches. Now McDonald looking to press, has options, going quickly, he gets David Stiff involved. And now Rashad Tucker gets it back to McDonald, working on Jason Williams, behind the back for Stiff. He gives it up to Bradke, who passes another Bradkey sword to the window. The window. Keep those hands up. Daryl McDonald has the ball. Williams to Jacob Holmes in turn, Ma, guarded by Terrell McDonald. Holmes gets it with Rashad Tucker on his back. Likes his chances against a shorter opponent. Front and back at the iron, but it wouldn't tumble. The ball is loose and scooped up by Brett Ma, who goes to Reeves down on the baseline. 36-year-old celebrating a birthday last Thursday. As Foreman goes to Holmes, who adds another two from close range. Adelaide getting second and third opportunities there. Back to a five-point ball game. Mark Bradke caught, caught a big elbow from Paul Rees on one of those rebounds. Here's McDonald wheeling and dealing in the defensive and he's scoring again. Seven scorers for Melbourne in the first term. Adelaide with six on the score sheet so far. Pass from Paul Rees was a poor one, picked off by Rashad Tucker. McDonald has a couple to beat. 
Couldn't get it to the teammate he was looking for. And now Jacob Holmes hands off to Oscar Foreman. And Jason Williams running the point for Adelaide at the moment. Inside the last 60 seconds of this first period. And the shot clock in single digits as Williams fires the triple. Off the front of the rim, kept alive by Ma. Now Jacob Holmes tries his luck off the window and that tumbles. Back to a five-point ball game. A high-scoring and free-flowing affair as we anticipated between these two. Corletto to Stiff. And now Brad Hughes, the shot clock works down inside of 10 seconds. Corletto needing help. Stiff baseline gets a chance to measure the shot. And David Stiff. That's on the score sheet as well. Eight scorers for the Tigers. Now, Brett Ma milking the clock. Long way from home as we head towards quarter time. David Stiff poleaxed him, and Daryl Corletto will get him for the easy two. And no time for Adelaide to reply, but at the end of one, the Melbourne Tigers have a handsome nine-point lead. It's Melbourne 35, Adelaide 26 here on Fox Sports. Some positive minutes for David Stiff. Had a little bit of luck there. I'm sure in Adelaide he wouldn't have gotten that no call. But he's knocked down a shot. He's had a very positive start to this game, and boy, David Stiff starting to play better as the playoffs start to come around. The Tigers are looking even more and more dangerous with every game. Well, this run to the playoffs is going to be very interesting indeed as the teams jockey for position. Sydney, well, they gave up top spot last weekend for 24 hours, but now they're back on top, and you can see the importance of this match. Adelaide 14 and 8, the Tigers 11 and 10. Imagine if the Tigers had grabbed those two games against Sydney, they should have won early in the season. They'd be 13 and 8. The Kings would be 13 and 9, and the Hawks would be on top. But it is very tight, and as you can see, the Hunter Pirates in the eight at the moment, but West Sydney and the Taipans still with a chance the breakers on the bottom and with the toughest run That's home of any team i fear that their playoff That's chances okay, are gone but it's certainly it's going to be shots. a great Step run as we get to the postseason and we can like reveal this, exclusively the that the season, player of the month voting has calls. come through and the player of the month a, most recently decided by the yeah, national so basketball easy. league has been won by brian gorgian and darnell Lee, who steve has tipped to go all the way and win the mvp and that's saying something. I mean, we've had some great players this year, having some fantastic years. Darnell's having a fantastic one for the Wollongong Hawks, and one of the reasons why guys like Mike Kelly have rejuvenated their career. Guys like Adam Ballinger, who had a subpar year with Victoria. A great job by Brennan Joyce. Stroking his ego when he needs it, giving him a kick when he needs him to. Brent has done a great job with him, but playing Same along with Darnell go. Mee, that doesn't hurt either. Set to go, term number two. Adelaide with the possession. Arrow get first use of the ball. And they're looking to eat into this nine-point lead. The Melbourne Tigers have opened up. Interestingly, only two fouls called in the entire first term. Farley in traffic needs help. Gets it to Riker, but single numbers on the shot clock. And Cooper pulls the trigger. It wouldn't tumble, and Adelaide didn't deserve any points on that play phase. And now Melbourne looking to run the ball. McDonald picks up the dribble, goes to Corletto. Only Stephen Hoare on the floor as a starter for the Melbourne Tigers at the moment. And here's going to work Rashad Tucker. Worried out of the points by Good G, but keeps it alive. And now with three on the shot clock, he becomes the eighth Melbourne Tigers player on the score sheet. That's yeah, a perfect situation for a guy that's struggling with his confidence a little bit. Give him the ball with a shot clock winding down, and there's nobody second guessing him. Tigers have scored the last six points as Reichardt is fouled by the NBL's leading fouler, David Stiff, his first in the match. And he joins Dave Thomas and David Cooper as the only players to pick up a foul. So the three Davids are being picked on by the referees at the moment. If you're going to commit a foul, make sure he doesn't get one up there for a three-point play. And if you look at it along those lines, that was a very good foul. Comment I made about Rashad Tucker. 
Not so much his teammates second-guessing him, but when you're not playing well, you second-guess yourself a lot. But in that situation, there's nothing other to do than shoot the basketball, the shot clock winding down, and it just went into autopilot, and he knocked it down. Tucker harassed by Cooper. Now finds some space for himself. McDonald joining in. Single numbers on the shot clock as David Stiff, a former Adelaide Championship winner, goes with a non-preferred left hand. Well, Shard Tucker cannot keep it alive. Adelaide will restart. We played 90 seconds here, term number two. And 11, the margin. Adelaide getting the job done through David Cooper. Corletto looks inside. Here's McDonald. Working against Williams, spinning down to the baseline, needs support, Corletto provides it, shut down by Willie Farley's good D, however, and eventually rejecting the shot, Corletto got it back. Couldn't hit the two though, and Williams now leads the charge as he hits Rykart, running to the hole. Couldn't get enough English on the ball initially, but goes back to work, and is now fouled by Stephen Hall. Defense starting to pick up in this game as Willie Farley just shuts down Daryl Corletto. I don't think he realized that he had as much time as he did on the clock. The shot clock kind of rushed that one, had about four seconds left. Had more than enough time to slow himself down or even find a teammate. Gase, Copeland, Dave Thomas and Bradkey all come back onto the floor to join Stephen Hoare. Tigers in this compressed schedule. First of three games in five days for them. Looking to get good mileage out of the deepest bench in the National Basketball League. No kidding. I mean, they put their bench on. Not only do they hold, sometimes they expand on that lead. And Andrew Gaze and Mark Bradke and Leonard Copeland are all fresh at the business part of the game. Copeland. Needing help, Stephen Hall provides it. He takes on Jacob Holmes, and now Bradke, with the shot clock working down to five, decides to go to work and needed to, but the left-handed shot was oh, to oh, tip oh, in with the right, oh, though, it will do. Double-figure lead again for the Melbourne Tigers. As Farley works into some space, this is looking dangerous. Couldn't finish it, though, and Bradke with the rebound. Copeland has Dave Thomas working back to it. They're playing well, but they got a bucket load of talent out there. That was an alley-oop pass from half court. Adelaide doing the chasing at the moment, and not too convincingly as Ma fires the triple. That wouldn't tumble. Bradke, outlet pass for Copeland, who bounces off Brett Ma. Goes behind the back to Andrew Gaze, who's unable to reel it in. This is the long pass in traffic, really. Brett Maher is running right alongside with him, and it had to be a perfect pass to get it over Brett Maher. Farley trying to shake Andrew Gaze, gets it to Cooper. They rush at him. Now it's back to Farley, measuring the three. Reichardt, the offensive rebound and the putback. Eases the situation for Adelaide at the moment. With Daryl Corletto on the Tigers bench, a great start in Drewy 600. Good start, mate. It's good to uh, get off to a good start here tonight with the, uh, the full crowd here. Here's Leonard Copeland elevating unsuccessfully. Dave Thomas kept it alive, but only as far as Willie Farley. Four on two fast break for Adelaide, and Jacob Holmes will get it to Reichardt for the two. And Adelaide, though, they're a very dangerous commodity, Daryl. They are. We've, uh, over the past few years, you can be up by 20 points or more, and within two or three minutes, they've got it back to single figures. So I mean, we, we have to keep the pressure up for the whole game. Fun to be playing in these games in the first half now, Daryl. Yep. Sorry, Matt, I didn't get that. I said it must be a lot of fun for you to come out here and play in these big games in the first half. No, oh, it is, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's great fun to get out there with the boys. And uh, like I said, with this crowd here tonight, hopefully we can uh, get the W and I'll be back next week. His case taking on Farley down to the baseline and the wraparound play for Mark Brackey deserved better, but Stephen Hall will get the job done. 
And Daryl, these days when you check into the game, you're full of confidence, you're shooting the ball well, you're just ready to go straight away. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, probably the biggest difference I find from this year and the last couple of years is that coming to the games, knowing that I'm going to get out of there, I'm uh, actually ready to play. It's just a matter of making your first few shots. All right, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Daryl Corletto there, our live in-game interview as Andrew Gage draws a foul on Dave Cooper. Who didn't like it, but surely the referees couldn't call it any other way on the big night. It's very difficult to get good position, and you know that was no gimme as far as a block charge. As we've said so many times, very difficult call to make. And Coop did a good job of coming very close to being there for a charge. Well, Andrew Gay's career 86% from the free throw line. He's made more than 4,000 free throws in his 18,000 plus points. He's taken 4,709 free throws coming into this game. And hit 4,054 of them. Money in the bank. 13 point lead. It's the biggest we have seen in the match. Played a little over five minutes, term number two. Brett Ma attracting plenty of attention. Farley goes back in his direction. Jason Williams looking to penetrate on Dave Thomas. Found a way past a couple of them. Did he travel? Well, not according to the referees. And Williams adds the two. That's a travel. He can't pick up that, that trail foot. Stephen Hoare gets it to Gaze. Now Dave Thomas against Dave Cooper. Bounces into the paint, forced into a tough one. Bradkey's there to clean it up and add the two. Bradkey into double figures, leads all scorers. He also has seven rebounds to lead that category in the game. And it's no surprise that the Tigers' run of success has come with Mark Bradkey producing his best numbers of the year as Farley. Finds Cooper and now Williams measuring the three. Wooden tumble, Reichardt, the offensive rebound, and he led the league in offensive rebounding last season. Draws more contacts, and he is going to the free throw line. Warwick Giddy in the assistant coach role tonight, as he was in Perth for Lindsay, with our Westover absent at the moment in the United States. And Lindsay, as he does on an annual basis, is off to a FIBA conference in the coming weeks. And while he will be in New Zealand on Friday and in Townsville on Sunday, their matches against Wollongong and New Zealand well, our Westover is going to be in the hot seat again. Another game going on around the league. Wollongong Hawks at quarter time against the Cairns Taipans. They're up 27-25. Cameron Rigby coming off the bench for them. Leads the way for the Wollongong Hawks with seven. Gary Budnikoff with nine in that one. That should be a good one. Cairns are hungry. They know that's a tough place to go get a win, but they can't really be thinking like that now. They just need to pick up wins wherever. Yes, Adelaide in the same boat as well. We asked Phil Smythe pre-game, how important is this fixture? Oh, look, for us, you know, Melbourne right now is starting to find a, a whole lot of form. They've snuck into fourth spot. And when you've got a veteran team like they've got, a lot of people being critical of the veterans is the one thing about veterans is they know when it's time to play good basketball and the longer the season goes the better they start to play so you know we're aware that this is a dangerous game and they're playing pretty well well adelaide have won four of their 11 games on the road this season in fact there are seven teams in the league out of the 11 who have only won four games on the road or less it is very tough winning outside of your hometown well they're one in seven at one point so they have picked up their performance on the road in this game right here the Tigers people don't talk about their defense a whole lot but they get some guys in there that are long they're experienced they know the angles and right now Adelaide are struggling to turn the corner on them. Last one. from the general Hall of Famer himself Steve Breeny his assistant who has been in the league right from year dot 1979 when he played for St Kilda in the championship winning team and what Steve Breeny doesn't know about the NBL, it is not worth knowing. Let's just say he's forgotten more than 99% of the basketball population will ever know. Here's Jay, he's trying to shake Farley. Now Copeland joins in, single numbers on the shot clock, that will excite Lennart. Looking for Bradkey and battered down by Brett Ma, who gets it back from Farley, joining in Oscar Foreman, shooting the ball so well from range, didn't want to get any closer, didn't want to cramp his style. And I like that. When a guy is shooting the basketball well, 
Doesn't matter if he needs to get any closer. He doesn't believe he's going to miss a 12-footer in rhythm. Tigers by nine. Dave Thomas steps back from Jason Williams and a good effort from Oscar Foreman to knock it out of court and prevent the basket. Six on the shot clock for the Tigers. Six seconds on the shot clock. Oscar Foreman at 47% from long range to lead the NBL. Having a tremendous year. And shooting the ball at 50% from the field overall as Dave Thomas should have done better from close range and now has paid the penalty. And Adelaide look to run. Farley and Mara again quickly up the floor. Foreman and Reese joining in. Here's Willie going to work solo. Mars tip in wooden tumble. Dave Thomas to gaze. Copeland in support. Excellent play from Andrew. That's beautiful basketball. It's so unselfish. Tigers with 12 assists in the game already. Adelaide with nine in that category as Paul Reese runs into a brick wall. Fans thought he traveled. Brett Maher couldn't finish it. Reese keeps it alive. And now they work it to Foreman, the hot man from downtown. This time it jumps out. And Reese getting away with plenty of contact there. As Gaze misses the three, this time unsuccessfully gets his own rebound. Wants help. Copeland eventually joins the offense and thought about going straight away. Gaze works into some space, gets it to Bradkey. Hook shot wouldn't work. Stephen Hall can't keep it alive. And Adelaide will get possession. All kind of games going on out here. Players, the referees having a chat. It's had a nice flow to it, though. So only six fouls called in the first half so far. We're less than four minutes away from the major break as Williams works to the foul line. That wouldn't tumble. Stephen Hall with a loose ball rebound. And Bradkey working harder than anyone to get up the floor quickly, but Oscar Foreman denying him the entry pass. Now he gets it, and Foreman just doesn't have the big strong body right. to prevent Mark Bradkey from getting down low and adding the points. An even dozen uh, now for Bradkey. He leads all scorers in scoring and rebounding. And Mark Bradkey just running back. the floor, just demanding the ball inside. And the Tigers and we talked about the Tigers getting lead. into a flow. When they go into him on a consistent basis and he passes the basketball out and just threw Oscar Foreman around like a rag doll, that's when they're the toughest. Reese gets it from Jacob Holmes. Needs some support as he bangs bodies with David Stiff. Shot clock down to single digits and Mark looking to penetrate past Stephen Hall. Nice work to Paul Reese, who comes up with his first points. Eight scorers now for Adelaide. Only Darren Ing and Brad Gerlach, who are yet to see court time. And yet to score as Ray Hunt provides the whistle. Foul called on Adelaide, their second in this period. Oh, gone number 53. Look at this little gap that Andrew Gaze First tries to get through. Analysis. Look at that. Tries to knife in there. He knows that those guys haven't established any kind of position. Well, not very good position. And so he's able to pick up the foul. And we've got a timeout. Timeout Here called by the Adelaide, Adelaide 36 ers Two minutes, 50 seconds out Adelaide from half time. Tigers have already racked up 54. Private, they've led exclusively. At the moment, the margin is 11. And Only three teams have come to member. this venue and won this season. And, uh, yes, Wollongong, so Brisbane and Sydney. Tigers, three of the biggest guns in the NBL. Uh, the proud naming rights sponsor of the Phillips Championship technology should be as simple as the box that comes in. Phillips sense it's in Lindsay Gaze, plenty of instructions for his team. Street, he was interviewed on radio B. today and he confirmed uh, that Al Westover would be car. the next coach of the but Melbourne Tigers. When will that be? Place. Well, he's not quite sure. Well, that was a good game. I think that the um, some of the games that we've played have been uh, on the basis of solid defence. Uh, the shooting percentages have been a bit variable but once your defense is holding well then the other things have a better chance of falling into place uh, we didn't do too well against Wollongong and that's another uh, um, standard setter you might say so we've still got our feet very well on the ground knowing that our position is precarious and unless you keep winning well it can get even tighter Andrew Gaze, come on. Lindsay in his 641st match as an NBL coach Two championships. 
And with an, an impressive head-to-head -head record, 15-8, Lindsay leads Phil Smythe. And we know Phil has a tremendous record at 61% through his career. Melbourne seem to have the wood on Adelaide, particularly when they get to Melbourne. Jacob Holmes harassed by Dave Thomas, gets it to Brett Maher. Adelaide find themselves down by 12. An excellent D from Neil Mottram in tandem with Daryl McDonald. Gay's first man up the floor, but they couldn't get it to him quickly enough. Now it arrives, and Mottram joining in. But Adelaide prevent the bucket and now have numbers of their own. Farley past Stiff, looking for Rykart. who did a good job, but an even better one from Neil Mottram to prevent the basket. And the Tigers with the possession arrow will get it back. Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Mottram said. That's a big hustle from Neil Mottram. Starts off with a double team there. And then on the other end, of, on the same end of the floor again with the big block. McDonald guarded by Jacob Holmes. Looks for Gaze. The pass was partially deflected. But now Adelaide have given it straight back to the Tigers and Gaze in the corner goes to Dave Thomas. Pass mark. The game couldn't finish it from close range and Dusty Riker harassed but keeps it alive to Brett Ma. Dave Thomas just two of nine in the match as Ma takes the hit. Couldn't finish it off but the foul is on David Dave. Stiff. Dave. Second personal for David Stiff. He thought that Brett Maher had initiated the contact. Second personal foul, Brett Maher to the line. That's good play. I mean, that's how you get yourself to the line. You go in there, you challenge the bigs, draw the contact. And it's very difficult to see. You've got to protect the shooter. So if he's bumped on his shot, you see Andrew Gaze is so good at it. Derek Rucker's good at it, drawing the contact. Good players that have stood the test of time. Keep that Rob Rose contact. Get the shot up. And they get themselves to the line, not depending on difficult shots every night. Tigers still enjoy a double figure lead. 90 seconds away from half time. It's McDonald. Guarded by Farley. Shares it with Mottram. Now Gay. In a mismatch with Foreman. Adelaide in their zone, and Dave Thomas not the man at the moment, given his shooting woes. He's 2 of 10, 20% from the field. The Tigers with another opportunity. Gaze looks to David Stiff, rolling to the hoop. Here's Mottram, and that doesn't look too promising. He's been beset by injuries. Just rolling an ankle there and clutching at it. Let's hope Neil Mottram, the last thing he needs is another injury problem. Tangle of legs there with Oscar Foreman. It's coming down a little second hand. Initially yeah, a knee good. problem, then a calf problem more recently, and he's had problems with his hearing as well, a ringing in the ears. They interviewed him at halftime. I'm sorry, the post game interview. He told me, but go to the other side, I can't hear you over here. And he gets no sympathy from his teammates either. Leonard Copeland's comical attempt is to tell someone to answer that phone. Where's that ringing coming from? Any time that Neil Mottram works into a room. Ray Hunt and Darrell McDonald enjoying a laugh. Adelaide will get possession. And they need it at the moment. Down by double figures. Dusty Reichart with 11 leads them at the moment. He's off the money here though, but gets his own rebound and makes a man's a chance for three-point play. Well, there's reward for effort for Dusty Reichart. 13 for Reichart to go with six rebounds, and only Bradkey with seven has more in that category. 21 per game is the average for Dusty Reichart. Fifth in the league. In fact, we have four of the top eight scorers in the NBL involved in this match. As the Tigers by eight as we head towards halftime. David Stiff working on Foreman. Couldn't finish it. Mottram over the back gets in another opportunity for McDonald. His three caught the front of the rim. And now Reichardt had the ball, lost it. And it's going to 
trickle all the way across to where Dave Thomas scoops it up. And Gay is looking to shake Brett Ma, who's done a good job defensively, particularly in this period where they've restricted Andrew to just three points since quarter time as McDonald goes back to the factor. He can still get it done. Two of three from long range. Gaze with 13. Leads the Melbourne Tigers. Coming in over the back, Jacob Holmes and Dusty Reichardt. They're going to be called for the foul. It's Reichardt who gets it. 5.8 seconds. Fourth team foul on Adelaide. So Melbourne will restart with 5.8 seconds left on the clock. You guys are on five. 11 the margin. Here's McDonald. As Steve Carfino says one of the best in the business, but he's coughed it up here to Brett Maher and finally it's waved away. The Tons won't count according to referee Damien Tice. And Adelaide will find themselves 11 points in arrears here at halftime. It's Melbourne 59, Adelaide 48 here on Fox Sports. And Steve Carfino standing by at the moment. He has Leonard Copeland with him. Surely you should know more than anybody that this is Andrew's party. You come out, take the first couple of shots, knock them down. Well, Andrew, the true professional, we tried to give him the first shot. He didn't want to take it. He just said oh, he'll take all the rest. So I went out and took the first shot. High scoring game. You get a lot of players in there. Daryl McDonald, Daryl Corletto get in there, get a good run. Obviously, you're trying to get rested for the fourth quarter. We are. We know Adelaide uh, can be down by 10 or 20. They're going to make a run. They're that type of team, um, very physical, and they, and they love to go to the offensive glass. And that's what we got to do. You know, we got to get them off the glass in order to get a win. I see you trying to guard Brett Maher out there. He's been a lot more efficient this year finding his teammates. He is very tough. He never stops moving. Um, and that's probably why Lynch is trying to give me a rest. All right, thanks, Bernard. Thank Bernard Copeland right there, the very and, uh, tough Melbourne Tigers. Tigers. Make sure you join us so after the break. We'll be more. We'll be back with more right here on Fox. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Hello. The Melbourne Tigers head in at halftime, leading by 11 points. It's 59-48. They have led exclusively since Leonard Copeland scored the first three of the night. And they are motoring at the moment. And no surprise in game number 600, Andrew Gaze leads the Melbourne Tigers, scoring with 13. And once again, the Adelaide 36 is having trouble containing the factor. And I'm sure Phil Smythe will be working over his players at the defensive end. They need to try and close down the Melbourne Tigers. It's a pre-scoring affair. Adelaide can put numbers up very quickly indeed. But the Melbourne Tigers, in this great run of form that they're showing at the moment, where they're looking for their sixth win in seven games. Well, Steve, they are 
are proving very, very difficult to stop. Well, they sure. I think to be successful in this competition, you have to have a lot of depth, and that's what the Melbourne Tigers have. Not just shooting the basketball, scoring points. They have depth going to the glass. Mark Bradke, Dave Thomas back into the lineup, gives them more strength with Stephen Hoare on the glass. So every position and every type of facet in the game, the Melbourne Tigers just seem to have it covered, especially over the last several games. And Andrew Gay celebrating the 600-game milestone in fashion, hit his first three shots in the game. He leads the Tigers in scoring at the moment with 13. Mark Bradke has 12 and 7 rebounds, and Copeland in double figures as well. And for the Adelaide 36ers, Reichardt had 10 points in that period for a game high of 14. And Jacob Holmes, Brett Maher, Oscar Foreman all getting busy early. And when you consider the hard work Brett Maher's having to do at the defensive end trying to contain Andrew Gaze, it's a credit to him that he's still able to be a significant contributor at the offensive end as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. You have to be able to back it up at both ends of the floor. you got Willie Farley, Brett Maher on the other side. And, of course, the Melbourne Tigers backcourt, not just Gaze and Copeland, but they're bringing guys off the bench are doing it at a very efficient rate, so there is no rest for the backcourt, especially in these games. Well, we're here to celebrate Andrew's 600. Let's have a look at some of his highlights from the first half. It wasn't hard to find some because, again, he was the accurate one. <laughs> no kidding, and that was his first basket, and they just get it in true Andrew Gay's fashion. Nice backdoor cut. Mark Bradkey on some great ball handling in the open court finds him again, and then he just launches a long three-point shot. And Andrew Gaze, you have to find him not only in transition, but when he's shooting the basketball as well as he is, you have to guard him about 30 feet in. Well, Adelaide viewers would be ruining the day that Mark Bradkey elected to leave South Australia and join the Melbourne Tigers. He is proving a man mountain here again. I believe they still boo him, but it doesn't really bother him much because he has some of his better games against his old club and he has just moved some smaller people out of the way he's been known to move some big people as well but look at this as he finishes up this play mark bradkey when he gets close to the basket and establishes position like that he's impossible to start to when you, stop. and when you have those big names of gaze and bradkey and copeland well it makes it a little tough to get some shots but stephen hall always finds a way to contribute well he's an underrated player he goes out there and does all the little things and then he starts to get out there get up hit the open shot and knock him down. Very valuable player to be as patient as he is, wait his turn on a team loaded with offensive scores to be as effective as he is. Goes to the glass as well as that man right there, Dave Thomas and Stephen Hoare, two guys that just wait their turn, and then when they get it, they seem to produce. And Stephen Hoare leads the Melbourne Tigers in assists. So you'll say that's because Lennard and Andrew don't like to give it up too much, and Lennard, he was out to score some points early in this one. He sure was. He was in the flow early in the game, and he, throughout his career, if you don't pick him up and he's in rhythm, it does not matter how far he is from the basket. He has a very uncanny knack of scoring, and he can do it early, and he can get them in bunches. Well, the Adelaide 36ers have had their problems. They haven't been able to get this lead down to single digits for the entire second period, but they are a team that are always dangerous. Oh, they sure are, and I'm sure the Melbourne Tigers are talking about that right now. The Melbourne Tigers know that the 36ers are a team who also can get it in bunches. Brett Mark can light it up. Willie Farley really hasn't gotten going like everybody knows that he can, so they're just right on the verge of scoring some points and the Tigers just have to be able to continue to match it. Certainly one of the most improved players in the league this year has been Oscar Foreman and he again has showed us some good shooting that has him leading the league in three point percentages at the moment. I like the way he is just not hesitating at all when he gets open. He's knocking the shot down, as you see on that one. Pulls up on the break. That's the one that you were talking about, Case, where he's 12 feet from the basket, had another probably 8 feet of open space. He could have put it on the floor and gotten closer. But when you're shooting that well, there's no need to. That's like a layup anyway. Full credit to the Melbourne Tigers, D, because they've been able to keep Willie Farley quiet. He has only two points, didn't score in the second period. And this is the second leading scorer in the league. Well, Willie Farley can light it up. And the thing is, he's such a great player, can create space for himself and with such quickness. Sometimes he shoots tough shots when he doesn't really have to. And I think he's got to make an effort to try and get himself closer to the rim 
get some drives, shoot a higher percentage, and then Adelaide will be able to probably reel the Tigers in a little bit more with the explosive backcourt both clicking on the same night. And Dusty Reichardt has also been another who's able to contribute for Adelaide in so many different ways. And for a man his size to lead the league last season in offensive rebounding and again be able to pull down boards all the time was a credit to him. Uh, it's, a, it's a great credit to him. He's gone there. Phil's given him a whole lot of confidence. He roams around, plays the game as it comes to him, and that's the best thing about him. You don't have to run plays for him. He will just take what comes to him, and he'll get about 20 and 10 every night. Well, the Melbourne Tigers have had a history so far this season of giving up early leads. Let's hope they don't do it here, Steve. Well, I'm sure that they probably will, and no you know, disrespect to them. The Melbourne Tigers are a good team, but the Adelaide 36ers, they can score points. So I'm sure that they're going to be back into the game. This thing's going to have quite a few more momentum changes. And I guess now that all the hoopla is done with the free game with Andrew and so far, he can concentrate on the match. It was important to get his first shot to go down, and true to his word, he was. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of confidence and a tremendous amount of poise for him to go out there and concentrate through all this, not only this game right tonight where they are giving him all the honors, but the lead up to it. That's all everybody's been talking about for a couple of weeks now. It's a big distraction, but Andrew has handled it with flying colors. Well, Adelaide have had their problems getting the job done from long range. They're two of 10 at the moment. Part of the reason is because Brett Maher is distributing the ball more than shooting it. And certainly Lindsay Gaze is of the opinion that he's distributing the ball this season better than ever. Well, I think it's uh, as much as anything a byproduct of maturity. Uh, I think the experience he's had with the Olympic campaigns has stood him in very good stead. So he's not only producing for himself and his own statistics, his leadership is becoming very, very noticeable. And I think it becomes noticeable, of course, when he's out. And uh, he's missed a couple of games, and you can see Adelaide's hurting without him. So um, he's doing that in a, a quiet and very efficient way. We have a great deal of respect for Brett, and we know just how important he is to the team. That's yes, Brett Maher enjoying a good battle with Darnell Me, his former teammate, for leading the league in assists. They're both at seven and above at the moment, and Brett Maher, for him to be able to still average top ten in the league in scoring while distributing the ball so well, he just added another wrinkle. He sure has. I mean, he's taken his game to another level. You wouldn't think a guy of that caliber and having that much success in the league will be able to raise his game that substantially in just one in just one season. So he's gone out there and really gotten his teammates more involved and he hasn't really lost it on the offensive end at all. And as we're seeing this season with the draw the way it's done, Adelaide and Melbourne are going to play four times. It's one all at the moment. And the splits are going to be all important coming into the playoffs. Well, it sure is. And then if these guys match up against one another in the playoffs, because I believe that both of these teams will be there if they're not both in the top four, they will match up against one another. And then how, they go, how they've gone against each other in a regular season is really going to be you know how they go against each other. It'll be a big advantage to who outplays the other one in the regular season. Yeah, well, Steve Breeny was telling me that Adelaide have 10 games remaining. They are five teams all home and away, and most of them, four of those five, are going to be in the top eight at the moment. Let's have a look at the stats to half time to tell you a little bit more here. And as you can see, the Melbourne Tigers shooting the ball 49%, Adelaide at 39, but just two of 10 from long range, getting to the free throw line a little more. And the rebound count now weighted in Melbourne's favour. That was after Adelaide led at quarter time. Their coach, Phil Smythe, has been kind enough to give us some of his time here at the major break. You haven't been able to eat into this lead just yet, Phil. No, look, they've done a good job. A couple of times we look like we're going to close the gap, but we haven't been able to, so if we can make a couple of three-point shots, we'll be in fair shape. And congratulations uh, to you and the club for moving this game to allow Andrew to celebrate this milestone, but you're not going to give him anything cheap in the second half? No, we, look, we uh, recognise he's an icon and we've got the game here, but we'd like to win it, so uh, hopefully we can take care of that. It's of luck in the second half. Okay. Bill Smythe, coach of the Adelaide 36, is an all top four clash at the moment. We'll have the second half for you right after this. He scored 60 points, 
Once he's scored between 50 and 59 times. One, two, times. three, one, two, three. He's scored between 40 and 49, 88 times. Yes, I am. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yes, guy. Times. It goes on and on, ladies and gentlemen. And that's in the Herald Sun. And that would be a very. I went out and bought three of them. Welcome back to the cage, a sellout of three and a half thousand fans on hand to help Andrew go celebrate game number 600. And he'll continue to set the pace in terms of a game's record, leading Australian scorer in the league at 22 per game, 13 to the half. And Warwick Giddy, a former teammate of his, and Lindsay Gaze, who have seen all this before. And they still have some work to do. Adelaide with the possession arrow to get us underway here in term number three. Adelaide looking to eat into this 11-point buffer that the Melbourne Tigers enjoy. As Riker takes on Dave Thomas and Bradkey did a good job with the help there. That's where they're going to have to do it. It's on the defensive end of the floor, knowing that Adelaide is going to get in some kind of rhythm. Brett Ma releases the shot quickly. Reichardt, another offensive rebound, and he's off to the free throw line. You know, like you have to locate the Melbourne Tigers in transition, again, the, the players that they have on the floor, especially Leonard and Andrew. You have to locate Dusty when the shot goes up because he is just as dangerous when he has a running start at a rebound. That's what he's out there for. Other guys look for their opportunity to catch the basketball and shoot it, and he does that too. But he's looking for an opportunity to grab an easy rebound. Half time in the other match being played tonight and the Wollongong Hawks, second on the ladder, enjoy an eight point lead over Cairns, who are 10th at the moment, and needing to grab some W's on the road. As they're going to force their way into the playoffs. Here's Dave Thomas, got past Farley, and then with a reverse layup, adds another two. Jacob Holmes putting it on the floor. Worried out of the points by Bradkey. Dusty Reichardt getting it again and again at the offensive end. Just padding his stats. They cannot prevent him from getting hold of the rock. Some players in a crowd of players will come up with the loose ball. And he's one of those guys. Great hands. Reichardt has eight offensive rebounds at the moment. The Tigers have 13 in that game. That's Lennart Copeland comes up with the goods. As with the horizontal float. <laughs> that is just impossible to guard. Farley wants to go back at him. Looking to edge a little closer, then tries his luck with a fall away. It wouldn't work. And Dave Thomas grabs the rebound. As the Tigers look to build on this 12-point lead. Copeland goes quickly. But inaccurately, the Adelaide 36ers. With Ma going to Jacob Holmes. And now Stephen Hoare has been called for a foul off the ball, just impeding the progress of Dave Cooper. He was working down to a dangerous situation. This is a garbage man just cleaning up. He doesn't get this one to drop, but he's just, he outquicks everybody to the ball, just anticipated that he wasn't going to make it. Pass from Maher intended for Cooper, spills to the man again. Reichardt, yes! Gets the two, chance at a three-point play. It's hard to believe Dusty Reichardt was almost unwanted in the league a couple of seasons ago. And yeah, that was just flat out dumb. And, and you wonder why some clubs, you know, weren't successful. I mean, the guy can flat out play. 
And you don't have to be a genius to figure that one out. The guy's got a great nose for the ball. And throughout his whole career, he gets consistent numbers at a high rate. Adelaide have worked the deficit down into single numbers. They weren't able to do that in term number two. Now they're making a move as Stephen Hall looks for Gaze. Margaret, a piece of the action. The shot clock down to five as Bradkey monsters his way a little closer. Good job from Rykart to prevent the second effort. Another tremendous display from Dusty Rykart as Ma looks back door for Cooper. He couldn't reel in the alley oop play. And Adelaide with nine turnovers, which is high by their standards. They average 13 per game which is the lowest in the NBL. Tigers with just four points in the first two and a half minutes of this period. But it alleviates that problem. Now he has to play some D as Farley leans in and gets the job done. His second field goal of the match. Days. Looks for Hall working the baseline and adding another two. You just got to pick up Andrew closer than that. You know, it's just too efficient with the ball and makes too good of decisions. This is a shootout at the moment. Who's going to score the most? As Reichardt looks for Cooper. Needed to do better. Pass was down low Very around ball. his knees. But it was one that he should have scooped up. Double figure turnovers for Adelaide, early stages of term number three. As Copeland was looking for Bradkey, but Jacob Holmes put a stop to it. Ma looking up the floor, gets it to Cooper. So Jacob Holmes for the two. Well, a busted nice. play, but it looked effective. Well, the Tigers will give you some chances. <laughs> some very poor transition defense. Tip ball, none of the Tigers are even aware that it was tipped other than the guy that tipped it. Pass intended for Gaze. is well defended by Dave Cooper while not even actually looking in the direction of the ball. And he just looked at Andrew's eyes and knew the ball was coming. And that's why he's so hard to guard. Because he was well guarded there and he still almost got a layup. Three on the shot clock as Dave Thomas fires. Couldn't get it done and Reichardt grabs another rebound. 14 in the match now for Reichardt. Also has a very handy 20 points to lead that category as well as Ma works inside Copeland, confronted by Bradkey, forced into a tough shot, and Bradkey grabs the rebound. Nice defensive presence to build your team around Mark Bradkey. And here he is at the offensive end, working inside Cooper, and Brett Ma coming across is going to send Bradkey to the free throw line for the first time in the match. And Cooper on. Now called on Cooper, his third. And he's like a plow horse making his way to the basket. Guys are making a lot of heavy contact down on his legs there. He gets around and then Brett Mark gives him a pretty stiff one and he still gets almost gets that thing up and in for a three point play. Ugly. I think I'm almost banked in. Bradkey makes the adjustment, 13 points. And the Tigers enjoying a double-figure lead once again. Riker against Dave Thomas and McDonald. They get the double team in his direction. Brett Mars left open. The three wouldn't tumble. Cooper's tip-in wasn't there. Reichardt again with the final say. Now he's snatching those rebounds away from Mark Bradkey on the last couple of possessions where he's picked up those offensive rebounds. Dave Thomas worried out of the points by good D from David Cooper. But Melbourne will get another opportunity and Andrew firing for three is a little deep. Jacob Holmes with it now. Adelaide looking dangerous. Ma back to Jacob Holmes and he draws contact. Free throws to come for Adelaide. Boy, Adelaide passed the ball so well, especially in transition through traffic. They're aware. Look at the spacing on that. The nice little triangle. And of course, when you're too, when you're over anxious, not letting the game come to you, you get a little bunched up, and then one guy can guard two or even three of you. 
And Adelaide just work it through hands in transition. Although Brett's their primary ball handler and doing a great job this year with a great assist to turnover ratio. They're all good passers and they're not afraid to move it through a lot of hands. Adelaide closed to within eight points. We played five minutes here, term number three. This is as close as Adelaide have been since the first six minutes of the game. McDonald harassed by Riker. Going back to seconds as the shot clock winds into single numbers and Dave Thomas elevates and comes in for the good. And the good guards know where everybody is on the floor. Foreman gets it to Riker. Now to the baseline, taking on Neil Mottram, getting a bump, wanting help. Ma provides it. Single numbers on the shot clock for Adelaide. Ma's pass was batted away by Dave Thomas, who will finish it. Ten point six rebounds for Dave Thomas. It's Farley. Gets it to Paul Reese and now Mark. Middle stage is term number three. Tigers holding Adelaide at arm's length for the moment, but Paul Reese sneaks under the hoop and Reese. comes up with his second field goal. Watson to Gaze. Dave Thomas trying to shake Reichart. Bradke works on Paul Reese. Good hands from Reichart prevented the pass from being an effective one, and the Tigers turn it over again. Dave Thomas with the breakaway. Dave coming off a career high 29 points against Perth Saturday in our match here on Fox Sports. Had a game of 14 rebounds in that one as well. The Tigers were most impressive as Foreman. Hands off to Jason Williams. Now Reese getting it to Brett Maher with a shot clock winding down now to five. Bradke stole it. Picked off the pass and sent it for Paul Reese, who's now called for the foul. The second personal foul. Brett's had a couple of very average turnovers. And the reason I'm pointing those out is because they're so rare. You know, he has those aggressive tur turnovers, and not many of them, considering how often he carries the ball for him and makes it happen. He's not a conservative guy. He's trying to turn the corner, and he's also a scorer. So you just don't see him make those type of turnovers too often. There's 23 turnovers in the match in total, and Brett Maher has seven of them. Shot clock winding down now as Mark Radke is buffeted out of court. Another foul to be called on Paul Reese, his third. Third team foul on Adelaide in this period as well. The Tigers have committed four since halftime. <laughs> Just a slow Mark Bradkey down. Paul Rees must be stronger than everyone thinks. He's a big body. Less than five minutes to play in this third term. Shot Tucker finding Mottram lurking down on the baseline. They took it away from him with some good D Adelaide. At the moment, Brett Ma goes on with the job to Williams, who's giving Farley a break, and now Ma penetrates, took them all on, and the teardrop tumbles to Brett Ma. He's into double figures. Third Adelaide player in double figures. The Tigers have four in that category. Days with 16. Melbourne's high score at the moment. To make that 19. See, that's the thing. You know, Brett Maher, a little bit of acting there, flops down. And believe me, if you want to cut down on flopping, stop calling those, and the guys will stop putting their team at a disadvantage. A four on five, Andrew Gaze has a freebie, and he knocks it down. The Tigers have hit nine threes in the match at 53%. Adelaide just two of 11 from long range. And Phil Smythe and Steve Greeny with plenty on their plate at the moment. Down by 11. 4.15 to play in this period. Okay, we're in our five out. That's fine with the handoff or the fake handoff. Now and then we want to penetrate to the, to the basket. They're in four fouls, so we can get to the free throw line. Most important thing, though, is to maintain the pressure on the ball defensively, okay? Had it back to eight a couple of times. Keep our heads up. We're okay. 
Defensively, maintain the pressure on the ball. Lots of talk. Okay, here we go. Come on, fellas. Go. Yeah, they need to do that, but they can't gamble as much because, you know, if you keep ball pressure and the Tigers start to miss a couple of shots and they don't allow them to get offensive rebounds, that's how they have to go about it. But if you gamble against a team that's playing as well as the Tigers are, the wealth of experience that they have, they'll just punish it and just get that eight-point lead out to like a 16-point one. Jason Williams hands off to Holmes, guarded by Rashad Tucker, shot block the single numbers, Foreman the danger man. Caught it a little deep on that occasion, and Bradkey with the rebound. Number nine for him in that category. Tigers get it to Tucker, taking on Jacob Holmes, spinning baseline, wanting help. Pass for Mottram, and too much heat on it as Mottram was heading hard to the basket. And the Tigers turn it over. Twelve turnovers apiece here. Three for the Tigers in this period. As Mark, some room away from Daryl McDonald, wants it back from Paul Reese. And now Jacob Holmes with Reese available. Pass was slowing arriving. Foreman firing and coming up with the goods. Oscar, George Foreman drill, two points. Double figures for Foreman on four of eight shooting. The fourth Adelaide player in that category. And again, the margin is single digits. A little over three minutes to play term number three. Historically, these teams don't play close matches. And with five on the shot clock, McDonald goes exploring and comes into the finish. Two points. Melbourne has the answers so far. As Reese heads off now to Jason Williams, running out of room, stepped out of court, but did it legally. And Brett Ma for the three. Couldn't finish it. Mottram getting a piece of it now. Bradkey off and running. Giving it up to Andrew for the three. Wooden tumble. Ma coming in over the back of Neil Mottram, knocking the ball out of court. One brackets you handling the rock tonight. Coming out in those long rebounds and just putting it right on the floor, not hesitating. Darrell Corletto checks in. Two and a half to play in this third period. Coming, coming, coming. It's McDonald. Works on Willie Farley. Bradkey trying to get it to Neil Mottram. Ray Hunt supplies the whistle. Foul on Jacob Holmes. On at number 12. Jacob Holmes, first baseball. PRCO 56. Good recognition by Daryl McDonald. Miscommunication by the Adelaide 36ers. Both guys going out to the wing and leaving Mark Bradkey. Tigers just five of nine from the free throw line, remembering that in their match against the Wollongong Hawks here a few weeks ago, they took 57 free throws. The plus record, closing on the NBL record. Two will count. The lead back to 13. As Farley shakes McDonald, and he did enough to worry him out of the points, and the Tigers go back to work. Tucker. Beating Corletto, ready to shoot. We're seeing what Rashad Tucker did so well for the Perth Wildcats out in the open court. He gets his turn to show his skills. Riker, he nuts towards the baseline, has cocked it up. McDonald gets the ball. Corletto ahead of him, joining in. D Mac goes solo. You seem to enjoy that one. Daryl McDonald running the floor impressively. Yeah, no, uh, good little run on here. He's got some uh, fresh work on here. And more importantly, we're making our layout, taking it to the rack strong, and signs are looking pretty good at the moment. We keep running the floor like that, we're hard to stop. Your guard rotation, keeping everybody fresh, is looking pretty awesome. Yeah, it is, and I think we. Uh, we notice it more on the defensive end as well, you know, it allows us to put the pressure up on the ball and Adelaide move more than any team in the competition. They're just a constant motion team and it takes a lot of energy out of you. 
Tigers have scored the last nine points here. A foul to be called on Corletto, which will send Jason Williams to the free throw line. Andrew, so much has been made of this occasion. Your 600th game, back page of the Herald Sun today, a two-page spread inside. You don't like all the attention. How are you feeling pre-game? Williams uh, to the line. Pretty nervous, actually. It's been a long time in 600 games. You reckon you get used to it, but uh, with these, uh, the attention that you get in a game like that, it, it just feels like all the eyes are on you, and it's uh, yeah, it's a, a little unusual, but it's certainly good to get off to a good start and get the thing rolling. And right now, it's uh, just another game. Yeah, I would have said that for the first time in a while, you looked really uncomfortable so standing out there and getting oh. all those awards, mate. That was uh, incredible, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's very nice and much appreciated, but it is a little, uh, a little embarrassing. But, hey, if that's what it takes to get a Phillips LCD plasma, or whatever it is, <laughs> I'm uh, willing to deal with that. Phillips certainly looking after you there. Here's Mottram in the paint, couldn't finish it, and Adelaide off and running. Farley, pops it up, not going to be really Farley's night. Andrew, we appreciate your time. Good luck, mate. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Good luck, boys. Andrew Gay's joining us there. A little over a minute to play in this period. Willie Farley, 2 of 10 from the field. Two assists. He's having a quiet night for the second highest scorer in the competition. That's a rarity. That's McDonald. Looks to go to work. Nice pass to David. Stiff and Riker forces the foul. He makes going to work. <laughs> Look at right Lindsay. Right <laughs> I have no idea what happened then. I'm going to have to watch that one on the replay. Oh, that's beautiful. Maybe it's different line. And just but a little. You see Steve Carfino smiling, you know something good's happening. A little tap there. And just four guys just licking their chops when they're making cuts to the lane or through the lane. Point ball game as we head towards three quarter time. The Tigers started this term leading by 11. Adelaide restricted to only 20 points in this period so far. As Reichardt looks for Farley going back door. David Stiff doing a good job defensively. And now Corleno, Rashad Tucker, and Darrell McDonald quickly up the floor as Tucker takes on Brett Maher, who did a good job. My goodness, Case, don't let him start to get comfortable in this roster, too. Yeah. We got a whip squad. Adelaide with the last play of this period. They're down by 20. And McDonald with those active hands, creating even more issues for Adelaide. Jacob Holmes gets it off quickly, but unsuccessfully. And a dominant third period from the Melbourne Tigers as Andrew Gay's 600th match looking like a win. 20 points to margin. It's Melbourne 88, Adelaide 68 here at three quarters on. Well, we said that it was going to be done at the defensive end of the floor. Plenty of scores in this game, that's for sure. But the Tigers really picking it up. The defensive intensity there in the third to get this 20-point lead. Andrew Gaze leading the way in his 600th game with 22 points already with a quarter to play. Mark Bradke, 16. Copeland in double figures as well as Dave Thomas and Stephen Hoare for the Adelaide 36ers. The garbage man leads it for Adelaide with 21. Jacob Holmes, 13. Brett Marr with 20 points. Although he's got seven turnovers, he's had an outstanding game. Other than those, the only blemish. That's the rest of the match staff with the shooting percentage. The Melbourne Tigers, 36 of 69. Adelaide, one more shot at 27 of 70. Only two of 13 outside the arc. The Tigers shooting it at a great clip, 10 for 19. You're in the post. You're out as the four man now, OK? Defensively, we're back man to man. So back man to man. Get caught on the screen. We'll just switch it. As long as there's good talk. Fellas, we can dig ourselves back in. We'll be all right. Get a heads up. Here we go. You two get in the two man game a lot. We have seen much stranger things, namely that Brisbane Townsville game. 
Fantastic. For Townsville, we're playing well, like absolute dogs for three quarters, Lana, and then we're able to Get turn it around. So I'm Robert sure Adelaide Steve will be Adam able to do it with the likes of Dusty Reichardt, Brett Maher, Willie Farley. That scoring trio, who average over 60 points per game, doing all the work down low. Adelaide is just capable of racking up a 40-point quarter. So the Melbourne Tigers are definitely going to have to run all the way to the line. And Adelaide just 2 of 13 from deep in this match. The lowest scoring game in terms of hitting threes was four threes in a match earlier this season against Wollongong. But to have only two at this stage is a big surprise. They shoot the ball at 37% from long range to lead the NBL. And they're 2 of 13 at 15%. Possession arrow with the Tigers. They lead by 20. Coming off a 16-point win in Perth, having defeated Hunter by 19. The Tigers are looking ominous as we head towards the business end of the season. And Gay is adding another two. That's the problem. If you extend the pressure on the Tigers, they have so many relief options that get them layups. Gay, 7 of 10 from the field. It's been most efficient tonight. Farley, who's been the complete opposite. 2 of 11, gets it to Ma. He finds a way through, but slips at the last moment. And Copeland with Peck Tucker doing an excellent job to reel that in and throw it down. Tigers have scored the last nine. They lead by 24, and this one is looking over. This is the turnover. Brent Maher loses his feet. We had a little contact with the feet of Leonard Copeland, I believe. I'm sorry, with Rashad Tucker. And on the other end, Rashad throws one down with some authority, a little frustration, maybe. Adelaide in the hot seat as Cooper gets it from Rykart, takes on David Stiff, and a good Cooper. battle there between the big men and Cooper gets the job done. Rashad Tucker. Looking for a breakout game for the Melbourne Tigers. His best so far, 13, which came here against Wollongong on New Year's Eve. And the shot clock down now to single numbers as Stephen Hall looks for Copeland. The pass is a little off the money. And an over and back violation call to the ball trickling out of court. Adelaide will get possession. Just not doing enough at the offensive end at the moment, the Adelaide 36ers. It's Rashad Tucker picks up the first foul in this term. Rashad Tucker. Cooper looking for Foreman. Now Brett Maher, close quarters. Tucker attempting the steal. Harass Brett Maher all evening to make it particularly difficult for him as Cooper, baseline, fills it up again. Eight in the match for Cooper, who had four at three-quarter time. David Stiff now with Cooper having to play the defensive role. Former Adelaide Championship winner goes to work. Couldn't finish it off. And here's Dusty Reichart working hard for the dunk. And a travelling violation is called and the points are waved away. I thought maybe Rashad Tucker may have gotten away with a little bunny hop before he got into it. He took about, he took a good three and a half, not, not quite the four that Ben Knight took earlier in the year. <laughs> well, that is the standard at the moment. David Stiff against Foreman, hands off to Tucker, who fires the triple. And Foreman scoops up the rebound. Adelaide, just 29 field goals in the match, including 10 since half time as Farley from close range came up empty again. Two of 12 from the field for Willie Farley, including none of two from deep. The Tigers, in contrast, they have scores everywhere. And misses Andrew Gays. Melinda enjoying that one. Andrew now with five threes in the match. He has 24. 24 points, Drew. He hadn't touched the ball for a while. He got his opportunity and just automatic. Speaking of automatic, Brett Maher in rhythm. Bang. <laughs> Brett Maher with 12 points, six assists to lead that category in the game. And he's picked up seven rebounds as well. 
David Stiff to Tucker, who works inside Cooper, beats Stephen Hall for the two and drawing a foul on Oscar Foreman. Well, that's hard to defend against. Pass number 31, Oscar George Foreman Grill. And look at this, Rashad Tucker just, that's probably his best passage of play that we've seen him in the Melbourne Tigers uniform. Nice pass to Stephen Orr. He subbed out of the game and the crowd appreciate his play. But they sub him in with David Thomas. So if you're the opponent, you're thinking, man, he's tired and they bring him in? Reichardt taking on David Stiff, getting his own rebound and Earning a trip to the free throw line. The hard work at Dusty Riker. Been rewarded here tonight. 22 and 17, including 10 offensive rebounds now for Dusty Riker. Well, that was a tough drive to the basket, and there was a lot of traffic. It's very. It takes a, a lot of nerve to throw the ball up off the backboard. I really believe that he passed it to himself. In, in traffic among players that are, are taller than you, you have to have a lot of ability in your rebounding skills to do that. And I'm sure he threw it off the backboard so he could just get a better shot on the next one. Ten offensive rebounds is a career high for Dusty Reichardt as Leonard Copeland helped himself to another two. His first score in this period. A 24-point ball game. Darren Ng into the match. Cooper to Foreman against Copeland who fouls him outside the line. Three, three throws to come. Oscar Foreman has been so good from deep that players are entitled to overplay him when he gets the rock these days. I mean, that's the rule. You're not supposed to foul a three-point shooter unless it's a game winner or something like that. But, you know, when a guy is stroking it from the three-point line, he's catching that thing with confidence, anticipating the ball coming to him. If you don't show a strong hand, he's going to knock him down. So you can you can understand them fouling him a little bit. Three points, Oscar. There's somebody with a nasty-looking stroke that hasn't hit one in the since 2000, and you know you're upset with him. Days resumes his battle with Brett Mart. Now Stephen Hoare with Rykart giving him plenty to think about. Shot clock down to single numbers as the two captains go at it again. Copeland against Darren Ng. This is going up. In fact, he's going to pass it to Stiff for the dunk. With the shot clock expiring in the background. Adelaide continue to press. But they're just not coming up with the goods at the moment as Darren Ng fires unsuccessfully. reichardt has got it again with the offensive rebound. Can't get that to tumble. Lenard with an excellent pass to Stiff. Gets that thing off just before the shot clock expires. Tigers look good. Chance to rack up their highest score for the year as well. That is 119 at the moment. They have 102 here with seven minutes to play. Gaze looking back to for Copeland, who was pushed by Taron Ng, and it went unnoticed by the referees. Heads up play from Darren Ng. He got away with one. And Leonard Copeland, looming baseline, looks for the alley oop play from Andrew Gaze. He was going to get beaten on the play anyway. Darren Ng had nothing to lose. David Stiff sits down. Mark Bradke rejoins us. Now Riker with Dave Thomas giving him some treatment. Foreman looking to penetrate. He elevates. Tough shot. Wouldn't tumble. Riker again. Over the back of everyone for the offensive rebound, and Darren Ng from close range couldn't finish it off. And Riker oh, reaching it now, called for the foul. Oh, number four, just going to work on the offensive glass. Twelve offensive rebounds. There's total of 19. And uh, my apologies for. <laughs> Getting the columns wrong in the Melbourne Tigers Perth game where I said Dave Thomas had 21. Thump on. It was only 14. And here is Dave Thomas. 
Tigers are going to get it back again. Well, this has been a celebration in more ways than one. Another three from Gaze turned it down, went to Bradkey. And he travelled, according to referee Damien Tice. That was ugly, wasn't it? <laughs> no one was expecting Andrew to pass it in that circumstance. He's 5 of 8 from long range. It's his 600th game. Adelaide with big problems down by 23 and Foreman firing the triple and coming up with the goods. It's Andrew with a bomb. Reichardt grabbing another rebound has Ingen support he looks to take them on feeds Reichardt from close range couldn't finish it the ball is loose Gaze touch pass for Copeland who has three to beat but he wants to take them on just couldn't finish it off as Foreman gets the loose ball end-to-end -end stuff here and Reichardt firing Darren Ing with a problem is not in this play phase and he's going to have to check out it looks like a dislocated finger for Darren Ing Darren the Tigers doctor Andrew Gunham is going to try and help him here. This does not look too comfortable at all. And Adelaide had to bring Jason Williams in. How long do you have to go to medical school to be able to fix that one yourself? Well, he's been there four years. He only has three years to go. <laughs> Adelaide has scored the last five here, but they trail by 18, and Stephen Hall helps Bradkey to another two. A little over five minutes to play. See right? Melbourne Tigers have had this under control since Leonard Copeland hit the three-pointer to get things started inside the first 30 seconds. Farley, still no reply for Willie Farley. And Bradkey again wanting to do the ball carrying duties as he pirouettes and feeds Dave Thomas. Who comes up with a spectacular play. This is Melbourne Tigers night. Mark Bradkey's handling the rock. Dave with the nice spin move. And that's just a great finish. 54% from the field, the Melbourne Tigers tonight. They play good D, too. Adelaide just making them do things that they really don't want to do. Dave's getting a steal, just unable to keep it alive, however. And Adelaide will restart with 13 on the shot clock. Restricted to 16 points so far in this period. Melbourne have rattled on 19. And another impressive display from the Tigers. As Gaze prizes it loose, it spills to Reichardt. He takes them on and he's back to the free throw line. Reichardt is 10 of 14 from the free throw line so far in this one. Closing in on his career high of 13 makes from 14 attempts. Dusty's season high of 30 came against Cairns back in October and in that one he was 5 of 7 from long range. He can do it all. Make those free throws. Stephen Hall gets it to Dave Thomas. The Tigers with their starting five on the floor at the moment. Adelaide with just two starters. Here's Dave Thomas adding another dish. Dave Thomas on the version of the semi high line though. Jason Williams looking to penetrate. Beats Reichardt who adds Reichardt another two. two. 28 now for Dusty Reichardt. He leads the game individually. And 21 boards has that scenario under control as well inside the last four minutes Bradkey gets it from Dave Thomas back to Copeland who was left alone a little deep with the three and Foreman too tall for Andrew Gaze gets the rebound here's Reichardt again taking on Leonard Copeland unsuccessfully however Tigers enjoying this one Looking for their biggest win of the year as well, which currently stands at 19. Bradkey taking on Paul Reese and others. Winning a trip. 
to the free throw line. Now calls. David Stiff checks in. Stephen Hoare. Great, he just won a four from the stripe so far. And Adelaide 17 of 25 from the free throw line. Tigers 8 of 16 at the moment. Bradkey with a double-double of 16 points, 11 rebounds going at the moment. Willie Farley has had a horror night. Works into some space, still can't get a reply. And loose ball scooped up by Dave Thomas. Andrew Gay is ahead of him. He joins in. Guarded by Oscar Foreman. Final three minutes. Of the celebration from the cage for Andrew Gaze in game number 600. The shot clock is single numbers. He gives it up to Copeland. And now David Stiff from deep. Unsuccessful with it. Bradkey holding off a couple of defenders. Couldn't reel in the offensive rebound. As Williams draws a hands foul on the Melbourne Tigers. And Jason Williams earns a trip to the free throw line. Ladies and gentlemen, Willie really Farley and Dusty Reichert going to the Adelaide bench with 2.43 left on the clock. It seems the white flag has gone up from them. Copeland sits down and we're going to see David Donaldson, one of the Tigers' most promising juniors, into the match. Ladies and gentlemen, our raffle has been drawn under government supervision. This year, more than any other year, you know, if you're on the wrong end of a win, then you should really be thinking about reloading because, you know, you really have to live for another day. It's the Adelaide 36ers have back-to-back -back games coming up against the Sydney Kings. Then it's Brisbane, Melbourne, Wollongong, Wollongong. In a horror stretch. That's got to be the worst. What the New Zealand's look like? New Zealand's mainly are on the road. That's more road games than Adelaide. And, of course, they are needing these wins a little bit more. The fans find to their feet here. 24 points. The whole family getting involved, enjoying number 600. And Andrew with 24 points, two more than his season average. Good enough to lead the team at the moment and steering them to victory. Williams, this is the back end. David Cooper throwing a skip pass to Ray Hunt, the referee. Main of minor brain explosion there. Tigers with only one starter on the floor at the moment, and that's about to change as Jared Leonard prepares to check in. Here's Corletto, unable to finish. Foreman the rebound off to Paul Rees. Cooper, the only starter on the floor for Adelaide at the moment. As Rees gets it at the top of the key. Back to Williams. Looking to take on David Stiff. Gets it to Cooper from close range. Is rejected by Daryl McDonald. He's got a bag of tricks. Oh, what a play from the Melbourne Tigers. Well, he knew where everybody was out on the floor. As soon as he could handle that thing, he was going to advance it. Didn't know he was going to throw a bullet right on the money, though. Whew. I know I could watch him for a couple more years. That is for sure. At least. Robert Rose joining Darren McDonald in the 40 club as players. The Adelaide 36 is long faces on the bench. Tell you the story. Tigers running their bench and really doing a number on Adelaide as Leonard comes up empty. Jason Williams with the ball carrying duties gives it up to Oscar Foreman, blows past Donaldson to the baseline, then overcooks it. Gerlach keeps it alive. And Cooper supplies the finishing touches. 
Cooper, the fifth Adelaide player into double figures. Tigers also with five in double figures. First prize in the raffle was a one point buffer at the moment. Second prize was a green ticket B68. And the sting out of the match, and but third still prize is an orange ticket plenty of excitement F68. with the Tigers in this type of form. Williams getting it to Paul Reese, who goes back for seconds and gets rejected by Donaldson. Gerlach, first points in the NBL 20, as he knocks Brad it Grant. down. Well, he'll remember Andrew 600. That was his first scoring game. First prize, Black B94, I was watching him prize, in warm-ups before the game, and he was just sticking shot after shot and caught that thing with a lot of confidence. It never looked like this. Well, these young kids coming to the game nowadays with a completely different mindset. Jared Leonard, one of those, wheels to the free throw line. Couldn't finish it off. Loose ball spills to David Stiff. No look to Donaldson, who on the baseline comes up empty. And Cooper puts a stop to it. Now Oscar Foreman for the Adelaide 36 is inside the last 30 seconds of the match. Williams penetrating off the window. Paul Rees with a put back too. Well, Adelaide adding some respectability to the scoreline. This has been over as a contest for some time. Fans have been able to celebrate with Andrew Gaze in spectacular fashion. Gerlach, it's the loose pass, gets it off, unable to be successful. And Adelaide, not even in the race, as Andrew Gay celebrates game number 600 with a 17-point win. At full time from the cage, it's Melbourne 112, Adelaide 95, here on Fox Sports. Adelaide outscore Melbourne 27-24 in the final period, but it was all academic. Leonard Copeland scored the first three of the match and the Tigers were never headed, running up a double-figure advantage throughout 90% of the match. Just the celebration the Tigers were looking for. They've won three in a row and six of their last seven as they maintain a solid hold in the top four at the moment. Congratulations, Drewy, on a job well done. One of the greatest sportsmen in Australia's history. Family on board to enjoy it. Wife Melinda, youngster's son, Mason. They've come here to salute this man, and he again has provided them with plenty to cheer about. 24 on 8 of 12 shooting, 5 of 9 from long range, and the Tigers are right in the mix. 9 and 3 at home, the 12th win of the season, and they take the head-to-head -head against Adelaide, two games to one. Still with one match remaining. Another impressive display. Adelaide coming up with the last seven points of the match to add some respectability. Let's get to Steve Carfino. He's standing by here with the main man. I know you're in demand, but 24 points after all of the things you had to kind of concentrate through throughout the week, throughout the two weeks, and still had a very efficient game, 8 for 12 from the field, 24 points, and more importantly, a win. Yeah, a good win against a good team. You know, uh, it was tough out there, and uh, it was good to get a, a bit of a break and no anxieties or pressures for most of the game. And I think that, uh, you know, full credit to the guys. They really turned up to play tonight. And, uh, you know, it was, geez, uh, the start of the game, it's been 600 games, but pretty emotional time, you know, when people are uh, congratulating you. It's just really humbling with all the well wishes and stuff. So it's... Uh, it's tough. I'm, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad we got the win, and, and now we can uh, hopefully go on to bigger and better things. I know you're all about team, and your team is playing very well right now. you got tremendous depth, but even Rashad looked good tonight, a little bit more comfortable. That's dangerous for the opponents. Yeah, I think that it's going to be uh, one of those things that, you know, some nights different people will step up. We've got so many different weapons we can go to, and, uh, you know, right now it's all coming from our energy. You know, we're playing a lot uh, with a lot more authority, uh, a lot more physical, and I think also on the defensive end, our energy levels are up and 
it's going to test us over the next few weeks because we've got a busy, busy schedule, but with this depth, hopefully that can get us through. And Neil Matram back in the lineup, that stabilizes your front line a bit more? Yeah, Neil was there and he's just a big body who can go to the glass and he was playing great and then tore his calf and I think we all sort of had our heart palpitation when the big fella goes down and rolled his ankle a little bit. So that was, you know, that poor guy can't turn a trick at the moment, but he's going to come good and uh, if we get him on the lineup, we pretty much got all bases covered. And what's your run look like? We've got a very, very busy schedule. There's no easy games in this league, and that's one of the beauties of it. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can... We dug ourselves a little bit of a hole, a hole, but it's good to dig our way out of it. We're not out of it yet, but we can certainly see the top, and hopefully we can uh, string a few wins together and keep playing well and, and prepare for the playoffs. All right, thanks a lot, Andrew. Thanks, Steve. Andrew Gaze with 24 points steers the Melbourne Tigers to their 12th win of the season. And they did it in impressive fashion as well. Had a double-figure lead in the first term. Blew that out again in the second period where they held Adelaide at arm's length. The third period was all the Tigers as they outscored the 36ers 29-20 with Dave Thomas coming up big. And then they closed it out in the final period, taking their foot off the accelerator to a certain degree. But the Melbourne Tigers have continued Adelaide's drought here in Melbourne. It's now six games in three years. And in the final analysis, it's Melbourne.